Welcome back to Brew Beer 101. So today's video is going to be a bit of a, a vlog video. If you like, because we've got loads to do. If you're wondering what happened to the Wadworth 6X, we drank it. It was lovely. Um, we was watching the football, and to be fair, I cracked the lid on it rather than gassing it. And all, uh, what was it, about 20 litres in here. All 20 litres of it was drunk in one night. Um, four people drinking it, so... So as you can see, it's all been cleaned and prepped because now we've got the town crier ready to go. This is our 10 days. It's actually day 11 today to get this into the barrel. I'm also going to bottle a couple of bottles on this one just because we were over on our volume above the 23. I've got some more little modifications that I've got for that and some new bits for the Brewster as well, which we can look at. Uh, and also I've got some more grain ready to do the next brew, so we can talk about that. So to go and flush the pump site I'm going to use this to the grain bucket because as you can see the grain starting to stick to the bottom of that so that definitely needs a good clean so we may as well clean this use that as a sanitizer bucket go and clean the anger and pump and then come back to uh, see what we've got there no uh, no points for guessing which team we support here so this is the pump that we were pulling the Wadworth 6x off you can see I've let the line drain down. It's a real fat line, this is. I need to get a smaller line because of the wastage that's in there. It's looking pretty bare in the fridge as well. That's what the heroes will do to you. So all I'm going to do is put this pipe into the sanitizer that I've just mixed up. Nice warm sanitizer. And then pull it through into this bucket. So as you can see, I've got two angling pumps in here. One of them is a quarter pint pull, and the other is a half pint pull. So you can see the size difference. One's a lot longer than the other. And then we've also got the gas. I'm going to get bigger gas bottles though, because these don't last very long, to be honest. But you need to make sure if you're building a bar where you want to serve barrels, that you can keep the barrel off the ground. Obviously, so the tap um, sits with the pipe underneath it because the tap will, will hit the, the, the floor if it's sat directly on the floor. And then the other thing is as well, you want to be able to tilt it, so obviously with a piece of wood that we can just tilt forward so we can drag all of it, the barrel until it's empty. And the last thing to worry about with barrels is making sure you can get your gas on the top of the barrel without having to move it. So that's why this is all open on the back here, because I can get my arm in and regas kegs from here. So that's all cleaned down now, that pump is, and ready to go next time. We'll run line cleaner through it before we use it, but it's nice to know that it's sat here sanitised and that everything is, is ready to go. Well, I've just noticed I've got a bottle of what we're brewing next. So what we're brewing next is going to be Y Valley's HPA, which is a, a wheaty flavoured beer. Absolutely lovely. So what I've been told to make HPA, or a clone of HPA, a small amount of wheat malt. And then the majority of it is Golden Promise. So that's all there, ready, crushed, ready to go. And then the hops that we've been told to use is Kent Golden's in the last the last part of the boil. And then Target for the majority. Obviously, having bottles of HPA already as well, we'll be able to do a direct comparison. It won't be long until we come to do the next brew. So if you want to see that, obviously hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. And the modifications that we've made to the brewing equipment as well. I found these rotating sparge arms seem to give the best sparge that you're going to get for a cylindrical mash ton. I'm used to working in squares, not circles. So we're going to give that a whirl. Um, they're only £20 actually, which I think is pretty pretty good i was unsure of the hose though the hose that came with it it doesn't look food grade to me and it's quite uh stiff to be silicon so i could be wrong it could have been for food grade but it doesn't say on it anywhere so rather than risk it i'm using the existing hose for that and also if you remember on the last brew which if you haven't seen go check that out the mash level or the liquid level in the top of the mash ton was uh was quite low compared to where we would normally run without the filtering so i've been round now and drilled holes all the way round in between the veins that are slots that are cut into this filter 
that sits in the bottom of the Brewster. So that might make this better, it might make it worse. But we'll be able to get more flow through it, obviously. The holes will block up, just like the slots do over time. But yeah, I, I don't know whether we just got away with it last time. And on the next brew, we might not be so lucky. So thinking about that later on that night after doing the last brew, I thought I wouldn't take the chance and we'll uh, we'll go for that. Another little tip as well with the Brewster is use the plug that plugs the overflow. When you're filling with grain, I always use it to fill the hole, stop any dust or crap getting in there. Now on to barreling this, so we need to sort out our 50 grams of uh, sugar in there for priming. And the bottle sugar is just normally a small teaspoon. So we'll get on with that. We need to sanitize as well. Don't forget the siphon tube. Put 50 grams of sugar in there. 250 ml boiling water. So all I've got is a piece of paper with tape wrapped around it just to hold it steady. So if we lift all these off. It smells it smells better than the Wadsworth that does. It smells really, really good. It looks pretty clear as well. Yeah, that is crystal clear already and it hasn't even been in the barrel yet so that's really impressive that's the that's got to be the clearest beer i've seen come out of a fermenting vessel clearly 10 10 10 9 10 10 little bit taste test look how crystal clear that is it's phenomenally clear oh well, bombs up oh yeah that's hoppy That's beautiful, that is. I wish there was a taste vision so you could have a taste because that is absolutely lush. That's going to be special, that is. It's going to be good. A few people find out, obviously, that I was brewing again. So they were like, oh, do us a bottle, do us a bottle. But they don't realise the effort that goes into making these. I hope you're enjoying what we're doing on the channel anyway. And we'll see you ready for the next brew, which again will be the HPA. So another great light beer with wheat malt as well. And we'll get to see what the alterations to the Brewster and the Sparge arm make on the next one. But I think you'll agree, we're brewing some tidy beer at the moment. Cheers. Well, I'm drinking a lot. Oh, can't wait to have a nice pint of that.